Howdy, ma'am. Can I help you? Is your name Cartwright by any chance? Yes, ma'am, it sure is. Hey! Ma! You could hurt him knocking him down like that. No more than he hurt us. You, sir, are a thoughtless, despicable cur. We came all the way from Carson City because of this advertisement. Go ahead, read, Mr. Cartwright. You just read it. <clears throat> Wanted elementary school teacher. Apply Virginia City. Ben Cartwright, school chairman. Not one word about male or female, is there? Hmm? Um, no, ma'am, there isn't. Oh, you think it's funny? Coming all this way just to have some man down at the school building tell me that no women need apply. <laughs> Why, my little boy and I sacrificed every penny. Suffered great hardship and danger just in order to get here. I'm, I'm sure my pa will make it up to you, ma'am. Your pa? Hmm? Oh, yeah, that, uh... See, that's the Ben Cartwright, the school commissioner. That's... No, that's, that's pa. That's Ben. I'm Joe. I'm just one of the sons. Well, very well, then. You may, uh... You may bring your father here to me. <laughs> oh, I wish I could bring him here, ma'am. But, uh, he's in town right now with my two brothers. But he'll be back. Why don't you, uh, Why don't you go inside and wait and have dinner with us? No, no, thank you very much. I'm afraid we can't spare the time. We must, uh, get back to town. That's an awful long ride back to town. Besides, a boy here looks like he's got a hole in his stomach. I do. I'm hungry. Tommy, how can you say that? Well, maybe it's because it's true. Now, look, why don't you stay for dinner? I'm sure if you talk to my pa, he'll straighten everything out. Sure, we'd love to. Well, all right. Oh. Tommy, you take care of your mother. I'll put your horse away. Okay, come on. See? You didn't have to do it. It was just a waste of time. Oh, no, Tommy. I don't think I wasted my time. Not at all. such handsome men and such hospitality. How could a lady not forgive you, Mr. Cartwright? Well, I'll, I'll try not to take advantage of that when we discuss some suitable arrangement for that terrible oversight in the advertisement. Why, thank you, sir. Well, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm a little bit bigger than he is. <laughs> you got him cleaned all over. What magic do you have? No magic. It was easy. Just scrubbed him. Huh? Well, I don't want to take all the credit. Hop Singh held him. And Hopsing just take a bath yesterday. Here's some cookie for you because you eat your dinner so good. Man, I'll take two baths tomorrow. Oh, now, Tommy, dear, please don't start making any plans. We're leaving in the morning. All right, Mom. Oh, why so soon? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't convince your father that I should get that job. Well, Mrs. Grant, it was the, the school board's decision that they wanted a, a male teacher. I think Mrs. Grant understands that part, just that it's, well, it's kind of a long trip back to Carson City. Might be a good idea if you just stay here for a while, just for rest. Oh, no. Why, why that would be imposing. I, I, I couldn't think of that. Oh, well, you didn't think of it. I did. Well, of course, you're more than welcome, Mrs. Grant. Well, I, uh, I have made other plans. Oh, why can't you change your plans? 
Well, just for a little while. I think Tommy's counting on it. Well, all right then. For two days. Good. Tomorrow morning I'll take you for a ride and you'll see some of the most beautiful country in the world. Oh, I'd like that. If it won't take you away from your work. Ah, uh, but you see, that is his work. While the rest of us ride the range and tend the stock on the Ponderosa, he is in charge of the scenery. It's not that I'm biased, uh, Mrs. Grant, which of course I am. But I do think that a trip around the Ponderosa will be much more pleasant than teaching school in Virginia City. Oh, I'm positive of that, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, not that teaching children isn't pleasant, too. <laughs> oh, really? The other teachers seem to regard it as a kind of war. You know, the kids fighting to go fishing and hunting, and the teachers fighting to keep their minds on Mr. McGuffey. Well, he is important, you know, but... Well, there's no beauty in it. No culture. Not like in the classics. Did you say... the classics? Precisely, Mr. Cartwright. Marlowe, Johnson, and of course the immortal bard himself, Mr. William Shakespeare. Well, very inspiring, of course. I, thought, I don't know if the children would understand reading Shakespeare. Reading? No, Mr. Cartwright. No, you see, I speak it to them. Enact it. The spoken word is far more exciting than the printed one. She's an actress. Oh, you uh, are an actress, too? Well, you see, we, we of the theater... Well, there's an off-season, and sometimes we find it necessary to take other jobs. Of course, back east, people understand and accept this. But out here, well, people are a bit ignorant of the theater. And they seem to think that an actress is a saloon girl. <laughs> Oh, well, I don't think everybody feels that way. Uh, what he means is that uh, Virginia City boasts one of the greatest opera houses this side of Chicago. As a matter of fact, the touring companies play to capacity crowds here. Oh, how wonderful to hear that. Well, we who tour back east didn't realize how civilized it was beginning to get out here. Yes, it's a common mistake, Mrs. Grant. Well, I'll see what I can do to change it. A few letters from me to such illustrious artists as Madame Siddons and Fanny Kimball might bring them out here, too. Oh, you've played with Madame Siddons and Kimball? Oh, yes. The Wayward Girl, Now in Spring. Magnificent productions. Didn't Edwin Booth tour in those? Oh, Edwin Booth. Such a great actor. Yes, and a great man. Oh, uh, you, you've met him? Yes, I've known him since college. Uh... Ma, I'd like to go to bed now. Oh, of course, my love. You must be sleepy. Look, you go on up to bed, and I'll be up to kiss you very soon. Okay. Come on, Tommy, I'll carry you up, all right? There you go. Now, it's going to be a ride on a real bucking bronc. Ready? Here we go. Hold on. I don't... Ma! Don't talk too long. Good night, here we go. Hold on. Hold on, Red. Tommy's really taken with Joe. I suppose that's because Joe is not much more than a youngster himself. Youngster? Well, he's just turned 22. Oh, yes. Well, that is young, isn't it? Oh, I was just out checking Miss Grant's horse. He's, no, he's going to need to be shot all the way around. Well, there's no hurry about that. Mrs. Grant is going to be staying on for a few days. Hey, that young son of yours is going to be mighty happy about that. Dinner ready pretty soon. Good. Got to go wash up. See you in a minute. Hey, get up there in a bit. There you go. Let's get under these covers. Get nice and warm. She don't mean no harm, Joe Parnes. Yeah, no harm about what, Tom? About saying she's an actress. Oh. Before Pa died, he used to take care of us real good. Mom's real serious about being an actress, isn't she? I don't know. But she don't know all those people like she says. She just talks that way. Don't be mad at her. Uh, Tommy, the last thing I'd ever be is mad at your mom. Does your mom take care of you just on what she makes teaching school? A school teacher? Oh, no. I'm never supposed to tell how she earns her money. In that case, you better not. But I want to. Shh. 
she she sings in a saloon. Ma says it ain't culture. Ain't something actors they should do. Well, I don't know. It sure is nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing wrong with singing in saloons. You know, Ma sings real good, Joe. Honest. Yeah, I bet she does, Tommy. And you better get some good sleep, or you'll be too tired for that picnic tomorrow. All right. Good night. Good night. Early this morning, just as the sun was rising, you might have heard me singing in the valley below. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Remember the flowers that you brought to me daily. Remember the vows that you made to be true. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Oh, promise you'll cherish me and cling to me dearly. Promise you'll marry me and save me from the grave. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Julia? I, uh, I've got to clean up this mess. Come on, what's the matter? Would you please get Tommy? We've got to go back to the house and pack. I mean, we're leaving for San Francisco in the morning. Look, I'm not going to go anywhere. You tell me what's the matter. You're frightened, aren't you? Frightened? Now, what would I be frightened of? Of what just happened. Oh, that, Joe. Well, you're just a boy. Oh. Oh, so that's it. Yeah, well, how old are you, Grandma? I am 27, and you have just turned 22. Hmm. Well, that meant a lot when you were five and I was one, but it doesn't mean much now, does it? Oh, let's forget it, Joe. Look, the age different isn't important, although no woman wants no to... No woman wants to what? Fall in love with a man that's younger than herself? Look, it's not that. It's just that there's something that I've got to do. Tell me what it is. Well, it's a very long story, I'm afraid. I'm a good listener. Try me. All right. I don't know where to begin. Well, I guess it all started when Frank died. That was my husband. I had to earn a living, and... Well, jobs weren't easy to come by for women. But there was this... This actress named Millicent Hubbard, I remember... She was playing with her traveling troupe in Omaha. And I got a job as a company seamstress, personal maid to Miss Hubbard, and bit player, all for $12 a week. That wasn't very much, but it was enough for us to keep from starving. But more important than that, it... I don't know, there was this... this feeling. When I went out on that stage, even with that tiny little part, I... Just knowing that, that all of those hundreds of people out there in the darkness watching me. Hanging on every word, I'd say. Watching every move. It was like... Oh, you're gonna laugh, but... I felt I was the most important human being in the whole world. I expected you to laugh. I wouldn't laugh at anything you said. Besides, I think it's it's good. I think it's important that, that somebody has something like that that they believe so strongly about. It makes life worthwhile. 
You know, Joe, I... I didn't really want that teaching job. I don't want to teach. I don't want to do anything except act. And boy, I'd do anything for that. I just wanted to make your father feel guilty so that he'd be forced to pay me a few dollars and we'd maybe get a few free meals besides. You see, that's the way I am. I'll lie, I'll cheat, I'll maybe even steal. I don't know. But I do know that I don't want to hurt you. And I might if I stay here. If you leave, you'll hurt me more. Go get Tommy. Hey, little buddy, you can't have seconds until you eat your first. I just ain't hungry, I guess. Seeing as how we're leaving early tomorrow, I better go to bed. You taking me up, Joe? No, darling, Joe isn't finished with his dinner yet. I'll, uh, I'll put you to bed. Come on. Hey, Tommy, I'll be up in a minute to tuck you in, all right? Hey. Mrs. Grant. You go on up there. I'll be right there. I've been thinking about that advertisement I placed. And the long trip you made and all for nothing. Well, I was wondering if perhaps a month's salary wouldn't be a fair settlement. Oh, no, Mr. Cartwright, you don't owe me anything. Well, that was all a, a silly mistake. Well, it, it would make me feel better. And, well, with the prices being so sky high in San Francisco, I, I think every little bit would help, don't you? Oh, please, please don't worry. Why, the empresarios are casting all their touring companies now. Why, I bet that with inside a week, I'll have a big part in an important production. She's going to depend on her acting ability to feed herself and that boy. I see two hungry people. Well, why don't you keep your opinions to yourself? I don't know why you think you're a critic. I'm sorry, Joe. No offense. But, you know, you could be doing a very nice thing if you would talk her out of trying to make a career for herself as an actress. Right to sleep, Tommy. We've got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. Oh, you're going to love San Francisco. So many things to do and, and places to see. What's the money? Well, now, you mustn't worry about that, darling. Mommy will get a big part this time. I just know it. And, and you've got to believe that, too. Mm-hmm. You, you know, it's different in San Francisco. It's not as crowded. They need actresses. Sure. I'm kind of sleepy. Of course you are, darling. Good night. Good, Good important. Let me in, huh? Come in, Joe. Listening to you sing today gave me an idea. Would you like to earn a few hundred dollars before you left? What do you mean? Well, you know I don't want you to leave, and you can use the money, so I figured out a way to help both of us. Oh, and what way is that? I have a friend named Jim Larkin who's always in the market for a good singer. Singer? For what? Where? Just the finest club in Virginia City. Uh-huh. You mean a saloon? How dare you suggest such a thing? Julia, no saloon pays a singer $50 a week. $50? $50. I told you it was no saloon. Well, that would make it uh, easier. I mean, in, in case rehearsals don't start right away in San Francisco. 
Of course it would. Now you're talking. Oh, there I go again. Joe, I... I've sung in saloons lots of times. Oh, yeah? Well, this will make it all easier, then. Besides, I bring my whole family opening night. Spread the word. She's good tonight if she was at those tryouts. This place will be packed like this every night. Well, don't you worry about it, Jim. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> I'll try not to. Where's your brothers? Boss? Adam? Jim, hi. Sit down. Take a chair. I'm going to wait for you. Hey, How's it going, Joe? Hey, three bears. Three bears. Hey, where's Paul? Oh, Tommy, rail him into a game of checkers, and guess what? He's already beat Paul three out of five. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're going to have some fun here tonight. Yeah. Friends! Friends! When you got a beautiful girl who can sing like a bird, well, like the man says, you don't talk about it. You just, uh, you bring her on. I'd like to have him meet... Miss Julia Grant. I, uh, I'd like to sing a lullaby my mother taught me. When you look around, young gals, and there's no one left to marry, and you wish you hadn't wasted time on Tom and Dick and Harry, Oh, don't lose hope. The country's full of men who lend your fears. The kind who love to stay out nights and watch a herd of steers. <laughs> They're waiting there for you out where the skies are blue. Go west, young gal, go west. Baby, absolutely wonderful. How about letting us buy you a little drink? Oh, no, thank you. I'm afraid I could. Oh, come on. The boys are all hankering to meet up with you. No, Why, not. you're the prettiest thing that's hit this town in the coon's age. Well, I... Hear what the lady said. What's Joe. that? Just keep your hands off her. Sure, I'm just trying to buy her a little drink. Well, you're not going to buy her a drink, and neither is anybody else. Oh, come on, Joe. Got you outnumbered. Joe! Seems though the family honor is at stake. Oh. Hey, I ain't never been in a fight without my head. fight last night? There wasn't no quilling me, Paul.
What kind of a brawl were you three in? That was the uh, opening performance of his friend. It was that Chuck Miller, though, Pa. What not? So he got out of line, and all we tried to do is... Oh. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, all three of you, particularly you, Joe. Did they tell you what they did last night, Mr. Cartwright? Well, so far, they've just sent up some smoke signals. I've never been so humiliated in my life. Well, there you are. Well, my place is a shambles. I've been up... Excuse me. Been up all night trying to glue it back together again. Do you know how much damage you did in there last night, little Joe? Huh? $150 worth, at least. And you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay every red cent of it. Yeah, well, why doesn't Chuck Miller pay part of it? Well, why should he? All he did was offer to buy the young lady a drink. If she's going to work in saloons, she's got to get used to that. As soon as I find out exactly how much the damage was, I'm going to send you a bill. It's because you pay the woman's salary doesn't mean you can come in and wreck my place. Good morning, Ben. What did he mean, pay my salary? Oh, look, it doesn't, it doesn't amount to anything. Well, wait a minute. All it amounts to is that you are paying my salary. Isn't that it? Uh, no, that is not it at all. Oh. Julia, please believe me. The only Mr. reason Mayama. I did... Ma? Get upstairs and pack your bags. We are getting out of here immediately. Again? Julia, will you please listen to me. I thought we were going to stay You anymore. heard me. Get up and pack your bags. I are humiliated. I've never been... I thought I was doing the right thing. I guess it's no use pretending anymore. You know how I feel about her. Why don't you go up top, Gore? Oh, yeah. What am I going to say? I'll talk to her. Oh, it's not going to do any good, Pa. Now's not the time. That's what I need some time if I just had a few days so I could talk to her, explain to her why I did those things, how I feel about her. Well, I know how to keep her here if you're really interested. Yeah, how's that? Edwin Booth. He's going to be in town in a couple of days. Talk to him and see if I can't set up a private reading for her. I'm sure she'll be glad to stick around for that. Yes, I believe she would. Well, you know, I know she would. Had to give me the few days. That's what I need. Go tell him. Go ahead. Thanks, Adam. You know what's going to happen in that reading, don't you? Well, if she isn't any good, he'll say so. Booth's that kind of a man. She ain't got to be on the stage. She's got to find out sooner or later. A little rough on her. Adam! What? Well, all my life I've been hoping for something like this. Are you sure you can arrange it? Yes, I think so. Uh, uh, Mr. Booth and his manager, Mr. Forrester, are going to be in Virginia City in the next couple of days. And, uh, well, I think we could work out something if you're really interested. If I'm really interested? Well, just to get the chance. A private audition with Mr. Booth and Mr. Forrester? Why, that could mean the difference between years of waiting and success. That's true. I think you'll find they're both very fair people. Oh, Adam, I don't know how to thank you. Your staying is thanks enough. Oh, that's for you and for all your wonderful sons. <laughs> <laughs> You can just unpack it. We're staying. Oh, whoa! That's the way to do it, little buddy. Hey, man. That's real good, Tom. <laughs> Well, I don't rightly know. 
Tommy, I reckon it's something pretty important, though, because your mama sure puts a lot of story in it, don't you? Indeed, a wonderful effort, young woman. A wonderful effort. Very interesting. Very. Oh, thank you. You don't know how much I appreciate this opportunity. It's been our pleasure, Julia. You see, we, uh, we don't know what plays we're going to do until we reach San Francisco, so I, uh, we can't promise anything at the moment. Oh, I understand that, Mr. Forrester. Oh, Joe. Oh, I feel like wide open space, like, like conquering the world. Will you take me for a drive, please? I'd love to take you for a drive. <laughs> I'll freshen up a bit. Oh, gentlemen, please, forgive me. Won't you have a brandy? Oh, thank, thank you, Mr. Conway. Quite pleasant. There we are. Well, Edwin, I never thought I could be so wrong. You're not wrong, Adam. Oh, what do you mean? Adam, you've known me for a long time. And you know that the one thing I cannot be dishonest about is my regard for professional standards. But the way you looked, the way you talked, I, th I thought you liked her. Your brother Adam asked us to be kind, no matter what the verdict. Well, what is the verdict, gentlemen, in so many words? To be frank, Mr. Cartwright, Julia has more than her share of beauty. But as a dramatic actress, she is distressingly bad. I hadn't thought about how much this had hurt her. It's not going to be easy to tell her. In a week or two, I, I'll write to her and I, I'll let her down lightly. Thank you, sir. I think we'd better get back to town. Thank you very much for coming out. Goodbye, Mr. Carfax Forrester. Who is it? It's Joe. Come in, Joe. Yes, I heard. Well, you know what's bothering them. Professional jealousy. Oh, that Booth. He's afraid to see anybody else come along with talent. Look, I know how you must feel. If, if there's any way I can help you, if there's anything no. I can do. But I'll show them. Oh, boy, I'm going to show all of you. You're going to go ahead with your plans. You're going to go to San Francisco. You bet I am. And I'm going to be a big success. You can tell your Mr. Edwin Booth that. Well, all right, then. Maybe there's some way I can help you if, if you need any money or no, something. No, no, no. Thank you very much. I am perfectly able to take care of myself and Tommy. Yes, even to the point of paying you back that salary you gave Mr. Larkin. I'm going to go to work for him at regular pay. Oh, he'll hire me. He knows a good attraction when he sees one. Well, at least you'll be in town. I'll get to see you once in a while. Oh, you can see me any time. Starting tonight. Why, you just come down to Mr. Larkin's fancy saloon and pay for a table. <laughs> Where have you been? Just stopped over the hotel, make sure Tommy was all right. Oh? Well, wh what's he doing? Well, he's in there playing checkers with a desk clerk. How's he making out? Beating the pants off him. Figures. <laughs> Joe, this is Frank. We'll see you now. Frank, I'll see you later, Pa. <laughs> Julia, it's Joe. Come in, Joe. Hi. Joe, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Oh, sorry for what? You had every right to be angry at all of us. Dear Joe, 
You know I sounded like a fool yesterday. You never sound like a fool to me. You know, it's a funny thing, but I guess I've always known that what Mr. Booth and Mr. Forrester said was true. But the more I failed, the more I tried, and the more determined I got, till I built myself such a life of lies, I, I couldn't let go. Oh, how do you know? You never tried. You know, it's really not so bad. There's lots of things in this life besides the stage. Lots of things. Joe, I've wanted to love you from the first moment I saw you. But I was afraid it might interfere with my dream world of the theater. Can you honestly see yourself waiting outside of stage doors in, in Sacramento, Brownsville, Omaha, first night stands halfway across the country? Oh, why Can talk about something that's not going to happen? Something that's all in the past. It is in the past. Mr. Booth finally made me accept that. Oh, Joe, if you really want me. I want you. I want you more than anything else in the world. Julia, time for your next number. Everybody's waiting. She heard you, Jim. Yeah. Got great timing. <laughs> See you after your song. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Sing good. Well, you look very happy. Yeah, I am. Any particular reason? I'm gonna ask Julia to marry me tonight. Don't worry, everything worked out fine, too. She's through with acting. Congratulations, little girl. Thanks, sir. Friends, here she is again in the pride of Virginia City, Julia Grant. Well, here comes the attraction of the evening. Beautiful attraction indeed. I'm a girl who's got an ailment. To recover, there's no chance. My dear old family doctor found there's nothing he can lance. The poor man tried all sorts of pills and drugs distilled from plants. What lays me low? I can't say no to anything in pants. <laughs> It's because of my buckles, my shiny silver buckles on the toes of my pretty purple shoes. It's because of my buckles, my shiny silver buckles on the toes of my pretty purple shoes. Oh, my little silver buckles seem to give the boys a thrill. They stand and stare. I do declare I get the darndest chill. If I choose one lad to shine them, why, the rest are fit to kill. <laughs> what can I do? What would you do? I give them all their fill. <laughs> Tim Rooney was most ill-advised. We buried him today. A sweeter boy you'd never meet, but selfish all the way. They're mine, he cried, all mine, and I will fight till judgment day. For my sole right, both day and night, to save them from decay. <laughs> I'll defend with me knuckles the right to shine the buckles on the toes of them pretty purple shoes. Yes, I'll defend with me knuckles the right to shine the buckles on the toes of them pretty purple shoes. So, hey there, 
young and handsome, if you're looking for a ball, just stroll around most any night and pay a friendly call. You may get to shine my buckles as the moonbeams on them fall, for I can't say no to friend or foe if he's handsome, dark, and tall. <laughs> You can polish up my buckles, my shiny silver buckles on the toes of my pretty purple shoes. Hey, you can polish up my buckles, my shiny silver buckles on the toes of my pretty purple shoes. I think we found the leading lady for the Bohemian Girl. Exactly. She'd be perfect for it. Perfect. I thought she said she was so terrible. As a dramatic actress, young man, but this gay, warm, exciting personality, this is what she's really like. Well, gentlemen, I'm afraid you're too late. That young lady has given up the stage. I have you to thank for that, Mr. Booth. I think I ought to warn you, Joseph. There's a saying in the theater, the stage gives you up. You never give up the stage. In this case, I hope for your sake that that's not true. Magnificent. Look at them. She's got them all on a string. I have something I want to talk to you about. Oh, Joe. I am the happiest girl in the world. Oh, it's so good just to have your arms around me like this. Hold me tight. Oh, you're really happy. I really am, yes. Would you be happier? Would you be happier if you knew you were going to be the leading lady in Bohemian Girl? The what? Did you ask a silly question like that? Oh, just, just suppose it happened. What then? I am through with supposing, remember? From now on, it's reality. From now on, I'm on the other side of the footlights. As Mrs. Joseph Cartwright, I hope. It is reality. Booth and Forrester want you for the, for the leading lady and bohemian girl. Probably want you to leave for San Francisco tomorrow morning. Oh, you're making it up. No, I'm not. No, I watched them out there. They, they loved you. They thought you were the greatest thing in the world. It happened. It really happened. A leading lady with J.B. Forrester. We could be in the same company with Edwin Booth. Do you know what that means, Joe? That means I'll be famous. Why, well, there'll be pictures of me all over the country. Everybody will want to know me. Well, I'll be entertained by royalty all over the world. Joe, I didn't mean. Oh, yes, you did. No. Oh, sure, you did. You're happier than I've ever seen you before. Oh, look, I don't blame you. I'm the guy that knows all about that dream, remember? Now it's come true. Well, we could go to San Francisco together. Oh. No. Well, San Francisco and Omaha and Cheyenne. Entertained by royalty all over the world. Uh, it's your life. I can't share you with the whole world. God knows I wish I could, but I'm just not that kind of guy. Well, then I'll pass it up. Joy. We'll be married and I'll be a good wife. I oh, will. Please don't try to convince yourself. Please. Oh, look, I, I know you try. 
But your heart would just be somewhere else. So I have to have all your heart. I love you too much to have it any other way. Hey. Hey, look at me. Come on, where's that smile? smile when you go out there. I want you to be beautiful when you go out there to see Mr. Booth. You are so beautiful. Tommy insisted on coming out here to say goodbye. I don't think I'd have had the courage. Um, Joe, I still don't know how to say it. I oh, don't say anything then. Tommy, little buddy, old Hops ain't fixed up such a good lunch here. I'm a good mind just to go with you. Thank you. Come on, Tommy. Mrs. Grant, I just want to wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Goodbye, Hoss. Bye, ma'am. Bye, Hoss. Bye, little buddy. Bye. 